a cyclist almost two meters tall who challenged the entire peloton on one of the toughest mountains of the Tour de France, the greatest story ever told. Do you want to know the history of Eros Pauli on the way to Mount Ventoux during the 1994 Tour? Follow my wheel and I'll tell you. When we talk about a team man as the main characteristic of a cyclist, we would have to refine a little more, because although Eros Pauli was never a born winner, his height and weight made it difficult for him, he dressed in his nine years of professional jerseys of the highest level from start to finish. Del Tongo, GBMG, Mercatoni, Uno, Saeco, Gan, and Credit Agricole. A high-ranking team man, a luxury for his team bosses. His well-assumed mission of gregarity condemned him to finish the great rounds in very rear positions of the general classification, with the sweet feeling of having worked for the boss until the last kilometer, but without being able to shine with his own light or have a single moment of glory. But in that Mercatoni team, they didn't plan to win in three-week races, but the vibrant victories in Volatas with Cipollini, Baffi, or Martinello or the vibrant performances of Bartoli or Casagrande in the best classics. Mercatoni went to the 1994 tour with Franco Chiocioli as the head of the team, but he was about to turn 35 and was no longer even the shadow of the cyclist who had amazed the world of cycling in the 1991 Giro. On Monday, July 18th, the 15th stage was played between Montpellier and Carpentras. A very hard day of 231 kilometers and with the dreaded Mont Ventoux. The suffocating heat that hit the riders that day turned the day into a real hell. Only the Alps remained for Indurain to conquer his fourth consecutive tour as his biggest opponents, the Swiss Tommy Rominger and the Italian Gianno Bugno, had set foot on the ground. Alex Zul was more than a quarter of an hour away and second overall was Richard Virenke at almost eight minutes. On Pauli's team, the best classified was Claudio Chiocioli, in 72nd place at 53 minutes and 46 seconds of the Spanish cyclist Miguel Indurain. The team's ultimate goal was to win some stage with their best sprinter, Martinello, whose main pitcher was Eros Pauli himself, but they had not been able to achieve it. The objective of the five survivors of Mercatoni Uno was, now simply, to reach Paris without further ado and try in the last meters of the Champs-Élysées a more than difficult victory of the fellow sprinter. These were the reasons why Eros Pauli tried the adventure alone from far away, something that seemed impossible for a cyclist of 1 meter 94 centimeters in height and 200 pounds of weight in competition. He was the tallest and most corpulent participant, more than Miguel Indurain himself. The good Eros left the peloton when there were still more than 170 kilometers to the finish line, and he went alone no one signed up for an adventure with a short failure. The route and the temperature did not invite a getaway that seemed suicidal. Pauli was more than an hour away from the yellow jersey, Miguel Indurain, and didn't jeopardize any classification. In that aspect, his greatest enemies were loneliness, his own weight, the heat, and the slopes of the dreaded Mont Ventoux. With the consent of the peloton, the Italian began to accumulate advantage. He arrives on Mont Ventoux's foot almost 25 minutes ahead of his pursuers, but the imposing lunar mountain, the suffocating heat, and a body already tired and not appropriate for ascent will dictate sentence. That's at least what the big peloton and fans think about the adventure of the day, who won't be able to put on the hero crown. Even more so, when halfway through the climb, and with the hardest of the ascent to go, Pantani jumps like an arrow from the group of favorites. The pirate has seen a golden opportunity, the alliance with the very hard ramps to hunt and overcome his compatriot, who climbs with a tired pace, with lines from left to right and vice versa that further lengthen his real route of the day. But suddenly, Eros realizes that he has internalized a tired but regular rhythm, to which his legs can respond. He has a lot of practice in this of permanent slow rhythms, accustomed as he is to the bus, where he must calculate not to get out of control in the most mountainous stages. Very slowly, it falls one kilometer after another. Pantani is approaching. The lead is reduced too quickly. 10 minutes, eight, six. The difference in pace between Eros Poli and Marco Pantani is impressive. 
and finally, the antennas appear. The banner of the mountain prize and a crowd that encourages Polly as his great idol of always. Eros barely has time or reflexes to appreciate it and crowns with a snort that empties his lungs. They tell him from the car that Pantani is coming to four and a half and the group of leader Indurain to six. Polly's dream begins to come true. But the martyrdom wasn't yet over. The goal of Carpentras was 40 kilometers away, and after the inhuman effort made in the ascent, the reaction of the body of an athletic cyclist like Pauli is unpredictable. He made a spectacular descent, helped now by his constitution of Hercules, and he arrived triumphant in Carpentras with more than enough advantage. The last kilometer he ran excitedly, moving his arms in all directions, knowing that the eyes of the entire crowd were on him. It was his moment of glory. Nobody, absolutely nobody, not a single cycling fan among the millions who saw that stage wanted the escapee to be hunted. Something as incredible and miraculous as the great victory of Eros Poli, and what mattered least to our protagonist were the 36 positions he advanced in the general. Cycling stuff. If you liked the video, subscribe and like, and if you want to continue enjoying the best cycling stories, don't miss this.